Welcome to the next episode in our series, Analyzing Creationist Claims. Today, we're going to look at a really cool phenomenon, the upright tree fossil. Usually, fossils are found relatively flat, oriented horizontally within a single strata of rock. But these trees are found oriented vertically, seemingly spanning different rock layers. This looks like it defies what we know about how fossils form. Well, creationists think they have the answer to explain this paleontological mystery. A polystrate fossil is a fossil which goes across many strata. And what it indicates is that all these strata, there could not have been a long time involved in depositing them. And so it's another evidence, in fact, that the fossils and the strata were buried rapidly and not over millions of years. Another obvious evidence that makes sense in a global flood is fossils of tree trunks, some of them 30 feet tall, standing upright. This right here is an exact replica that was done of a polystrata fossil. Scientists would say that the strata here is about 2 million years old, but that can't be because that can't remain intact while that's taking place. So what this says is, is that this deposition took place rapidly, and that is another proof of a worldwide flood and a young earth. All right, according to creationists, these upright fossils, which they call polystrate trees, are evidence of a global flood, the biblical Noah's flood that God sent to wipe out all living things except for Noah and the creatures along with him on the boat that God told him to build. And creationists also claim that these tree fossils are evidence that the fossil record doesn't actually represent millions of years of the Earth's history. They contend that the fossils that we find on Earth are really quite young, just a few thousand years old. For creationists, the deep, deep history contained within the geological strata is just a scientific misrepresentation of the geological evidence. In this video, we'll take a look at how fossils typically form and how it is that we can determine the ages of the different layers of rock in which those fossils are found. And of course, all of this will certainly raise some questions about how in the world these upright tree fossils could have come to exist. So we'll tackle that question too. Can natural processes actually explain these strange occurrences? Part 1. How fossils form. Fossils typically form when something gets completely buried quite rapidly in a layer of mud or sand or volcanic ash. This could be on land or in the sea. This mud, sand, or ash protects the now dead organism from typical processes of decay. And being surrounded by a layer of mud, for example, will lock that specimen into place. The soft, fleshy bits typically still decompose reasonably rapidly, but the hard parts, things like shells, bones, teeth, maybe plant parts, those take considerably longer. They undergo a process of slow decomposition. Over time, groundwater rich in minerals slowly seeps into the decomposing bone, shell, or plant parts. These minerals get deposited into the pores and cavities that have started to form. As the minerals crystallize, they replace the organic material, turning the remains into an identical stone copy of whatever was buried. Part 2. Determining the age of fossils. So how can we determine how old a fossil actually is? Well, fossils can often be dated simply based on the layer of rock in which they're found. And we date rock layers using radiometric dating techniques. Once the age of a given rock layer has been established, using those techniques, we get a pretty good idea of the age of the fossils in that layer, wherever that layer occurs across a broad geographic area. So what are these radiometric dating techniques? Well, volcanic rock deposits, for example, can be dated using the potassium-argon method. You see, potassium normally has a molecular weight of 39 grams per mole. When fresh volcanic deposits are laid down, they contain small amounts of potassium, and most of that potassium is potassium-39. However, 
a tiny, tiny, but very predictable fraction of the potassium in the newly formed volcanic rock deposits is radioactive. It's like it's supercharged. It has a molecular weight of 40 grams per mole. That supercharged potassium-40 will decay at a predictable rate into another element called argon-40. So we can simply measure the relative ratio of the argon-40 to the potassium-40 in volcanic rock to establish how long ago it was laid down. There are other dating methods that can be used for other types of rocks and layers of different ages, but they generally work on the same principle. Part three, why upright fossils seem problematic. Well, if these upright fossils actually do go across layers of rock, as they appear to, well, rock layers are thousands of years apart. So that would mean that either fossils maybe don't form the way that paleontologists and geologists claim that they do, or maybe the rock layers aren't as old as geologists claim that they are, or maybe both. I mean, a tree won't hang around upright for thousands of years while sedimentation slowly builds up around it. It would decay or get co-opted by insects or other animals before then, and it can't fossilize sort of bit by bit from the bottom up. And of course, a tree won't grow up through the rock layers, so we have a bit of a problem here. Or do we? Part four, how tree fossils form. All right, what do we know about how tree fossils form? Well, there are actually two ways that this can happen. The first way is typically from volcanic processes. Massive volcanic triggered mudslides or molten lava flows can result in trees getting bowled over and buried in one single very thick layer of sediment, whether that's mud or subsequent volcanic ash. This method is how the trees in the famous Petrified Forest National Park were formed. These Fossil trees are largely made of silica, which is very common in volcanic ash. But these trees, they aren't the polystrate trees that creationists typically focus on. These particular trees were actually buried relatively flat, just in a really thick layer of ash. This brings us to the second way that tree fossils are formed. Ancient floodplains. What would happen is that there would be a period of regular and very significant flooding that would occur. Each flood would lay down a layer of mud at the base of a tree, sometimes an inch or two, sometimes several inches, maybe even a foot, depending on the severity of the flood. This would happen over and over and over again during the life of the tree, slowly burying it over the span of, well, decades. Eventually, of course, the tree would die and the part above the ground would get toppled. The four, five, maybe 10 feet of stump encased in these mud layers would be buried. And eventually this fossilization process would start to occur over the next few thousand years with that tree stump encased in those layers of dried mud. The stump would get mineralized and turned to stone. There's one really important thing about rock layers here that creationists seem to forget. Sometimes tiny layers of rock can represent tens of thousands of years or more. In fact, one rule of thumb that's sometimes used is that an inch of rock layer can represent up to a thousand years of sedimentation. But this isn't a hard and fast rule. Other times, rock layers of several inches or even several feet may have accumulated over just a few decades. Or you can even have one pretty thick layer of rock that was deposited in a single event. So even though these upright trees seem to cross several layers of rock, those layers, in the case of most upright trees, were all laid down within a few years of each other. It gives the illusion of a tree fossil transversing millions of years of rock layers. Whereas in reality, it's just a really cool natural geological fossil feature. And how do we know this? Like for sure, for sure know this? Well, radiometric dating can confirm that the layers of rock surrounding these kinds of fossils are in fact the same age. Tree fossils look phenomenal, truly stunning, but they aren't evidence of a global flood. And they aren't evidence that paleontologists and geologists are out to lunch. 
They form just like every other type of fossil. It's just the circumstances that surround their burying are a little unique. Well, that's all for this episode. If you have any creationist claims or evidence that you'd like to see in an upcoming video, leave a note in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.